In the show for this week, we'll take a look at a faster and more power efficient Google Chrome. Also, the battle for the internet is heating up. Who will have control of the web? All this and more in this episode of Whirlwind Radio. Hi there, welcome to Whirlwind Radio. Thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Marcelo Sugdeo. On Wednesday of this week, Apple unveiled what is called the best iPhone ever, the iPhone 7. But it seems that investors don't have the same excitement in this announcement as Apple does. Apple shares dropped 0.38% immediately after the announcement of the iPhone 7 and its 7 Plus. The reason being, there is no new innovation that we've all come to expect from Apple. In this latest version of the iPhone, what is really new is the improvement in battery life. Other features include a dual camera, which is not really new and can be found in about eight other devices, and there is no port for a traditional headphone jack. Analysts predict that the new iPhone, the best iPhone ever, will have strong holiday sales, but suggest that the new upgrades in this phone is not enough to reverse the trend of the slowing iPhone sales growth, a decline that Apple is seeing for the first time in many years in dominating the market. So why am I not excited about the best iPhone ever? Well, the biggest thing is the iPhone line has been stagnating for a little while now. After five years under Tim Cook, Apple has become a more profitable company. There is no doubt about that. But there have been no real game-changing innovations, the kind that we have seen when Steve Jobs was around. The iPhone 7 at best is a solid phone, but an average product that offers only small updates to its earlier version. Updates that the competition have delivered months and perhaps years ago. With September quickly slipping away, we are headed to a deadline that will see the U.S. giving up control of the Internet. Republicans in Congress are in a showdown with the White House over its plan to give up oversight of the Internet. Lawmakers have warned that the Obama administration's plan to give up its authority over the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, a nonprofit organization that is responsible for managing the Internet's domain name system, could give authoritarian countries like China and Russia an opening to make an online power grab. Now, the actual date of the transition is October the 1st. With this date quickly approaching, Republicans are looking at ways to delay this transition. Some of the lawmakers are adamantly opposed to the transition. Then there are some who think that now is not the time, and that there are many concerns need to be addressed first, as there wouldn't be a second chance to get this right. Now, with congressional roadblocks on the horizon, what the Obama administration has been doing is to quietly urge tech companies to support this transition. In a speech to industry, Deputy Secretary of Commerce Bruce Andrews stressed that the credibility of the U.S. government and its commitment to the international community are on the line, according to a piece from Politico. So it seems that it's more important to be credible in the eyes of the world rather than continue to control and protect the Internet from non-democratic countries. Now, this transition plan was announced in 2014 to enhance, quote-unquote, the multi-stakeholder model of Internet governance, which came in the wake of Edward Snowden's leaks about the NSA surveillance which sparked questions in Europe and elsewhere about the U.S. role in managing the Internet's architecture. The Republicans criticized the decision, saying that the loosening of the U.S. control would create a vacuum filled by the likes of Russia and China, leading to more online censorship. Since then, Congress has passed a series of funding provisions 
that barred the agency from giving up its responsibility over the domain name functions. The latest of these uh, provisions is set to expire on September the 30th. The chief of the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, Larry Strickling, urged Congress not to delay the process any further. So we're seeing two sides of the debate. One saying, let's give up our authority over the governance of the Internet. And the other side is saying, no, we should not. Now think about this. If the U.S. should go ahead with this, we could see the control of the Internet being administered by Russia or China. What does that mean for the rest of us? It means that free speech will be curtailed. And now we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about how you can preserve your battery power with the latest version of Google Chrome. One of the biggest challenges in IT is determining how to efficiently deploy, manage, and operate data centers at specific capacity. Learn how VMware on IBM Cloud enables you to consolidate legacy infrastructures onto an automated and centrally managed software-defined data center. Some of the topics of the free white papers include consolidate complex environments, backup and disaster recovery, and secure cloud workloads. You can download these free white papers brought to you by IBM by clicking the link in the text below. Welcome back to Whirlwind Radio. Which is the most efficient browser of them all? A few months ago, Microsoft released Battery Test, which claims that you can browse for a longer time on Microsoft Edge than Chrome and even Firefox. What Microsoft did was to stream videos on Surface Books running the latest versions of Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Opera. Then they compared how long each ran for before dying. According to a blog post from Microsoft, the Microsoft Edge browser outlasts the rest, delivering 17 to 70 percent more battery life than the competition. It was reported in the same blog that Microsoft Edge lasted three hours longer than Google Chrome. I'm not sure if you're aware of this before, but it seems like Google Chrome is using up a lot of battery power. But Google isn't buying Microsoft's claim that Chrome's battery life is terrible. The search giant has posted a video that shows battery life improvements, which makes Google Chrome far quicker and more battery friendly than versions from just a year ago. With their new update, this is the Chrome 53, released last week, Battery usage is down a third on Mac laptops, with a general 15% improvement in speed across platforms since last year. The most visible enhancements are the page scrolling and video and image rendering. More efficient methods have made it possible to extend video playback on Windows 10 machines by two hours since Chrome 46, that's the version 46, which was released in October 2015. Google pointed out that you will be able to get better performance and battery life when using streaming video sites. And this is good for users, especially when you consider that we consume so much more video than ever before. Also, Google is starting to roll out functionality to make the process of web browsing faster as well with payment functionality like the Android Pay. By storing your credit card data securely, and allowing you to check out of websites quicker. Also the support of payment request web standard which is to be rolled out across other platforms in the near future. There's one big power and performance drain though that still remains supported at least for now and that's Flash. That's not for too much longer though. Google already has started to block about 90 percent of background Flash with this release of Chrome. However, with Chrome 55, which is due to, to be released in December, 
Flash will be blocked by default. And that could be more good news for Chrome battery life and also performance given Flash's bad repetition of slowing down the browsing experience and being a battery eater. So if you have given up on Google Chrome, it might be worth revisiting since this new version of Chrome is faster and more battery friendly. With that, we've come to the end of another episode of Whirlwind Radio. Don't forget, check the link below to view the white papers on cloud. From all of us here at Whirlwind Radio, this is Marcelo Sugdeo saying stay safe in the technology whirlwind.